Hi, I'm Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team bringing you the word on the street talking Indiana real estate. Today we're going to tour the three most popular neighborhoods in Zionsville, Indiana. Zionsville has a reputation for being a charming, cozy little town and expensive. So today we're going to look at homes at three different price points. Follow me now. Let's go check them out. We're going to open with the Eagle Nest neighborhood where 23 homes were sold in the past year. That's more than any other uh, neighborhood in the town of Zionsville. Prices range from 378 to 600,000, which makes this inexpensive or a bargain in Zionsville. The neighborhood offers up playgrounds, parks, and a clubhouse, plus tennis, basketball, and a pool. Plus, it's just a neighborhood where people get together. There are neighborhood block parties, and there's even a group of local realtors that put on about 10 events a year in the neighborhood. Okay, let's take a look at what you get in a home in Eagle's Nest. We're gonna take a look at 7826 Blue Jay Way. This is a classic two-story with 3,226 square feet over a 1,444 square foot basement. Finished, I might add. You start with a nicely landscaped uh, lot featuring the uh, all brick home. And hey, who doesn't like brick? It has a dramatic entry foyer, has both a living room and a family room so the family can spread out if they want to. It's open concept, highlighted by a kitchen with an island. The large master bedroom has a four piece bathroom ensuite. And the full basement is set up with uh, a TV entertainment area, game center, and a bar. Outdoors, you'll find a pergola and a stone fire pit with five bedrooms, three and a half baths. This one was built in 2006 and it sold for 521,600. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna to wanna to pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. Moving on to the second of our three neighborhoods in this tour, we're gonna to take a look at Stonegate. With 18 sales in the past year, it ranks number three on our list. Prices range from 600,000 to all the way to 1.8 million. We'll call this the middle tier of our tour. Now, Stonegate offers residents a pool, playground, park, and walking trails. And there's also a big meeting house where special events are held. Let's take a look at a good example of a Stonegate house. We're gonna look at 7666 Deerfield Lane. We're talking 3,526 square foot, two story, over a 1,597 square foot basement. This custom built home features much in the way of very hard to find craftsmanship. The main gathering room is an excellent example. It is a large stone fireplace and a tray ceiling with crisscrossing wood beams. And that's not even to mention the uh, barn style glass doors. They're a nice touch. The gourmet kitchen has over the top appliances for the chef and the family. And check out the view from that patio. Then at a very convenient location within the neighborhood, which makes life easy. With six bedrooms and five full baths, this one was built in 2016. It happens to be on the market currently. It's listed by Compass Realty, but FYI, I can help you with any house in the state, regardless of whether it's listed by myself or another agent. And the ticket on this one is 995,000. If you'd like to see this or any other house in the market, give me a quick call or text. Now, if you have a home to sell, this next section is guaranteed to make you money. But if you don't have a home to sell, well, hey, feel free to skip ahead to the next house on the tour. So if you're thinking about selling, have you ever wondered if you're gonna to have to paint or re-carpet? Or maybe your brother-in-law told you that you just have to fix up your bathroom. Hey, follow me. I'm gonna arm you with some knowledge so you can make the best decisions that will make you the most money. And I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five homes in a grand total of less than 30 days. Number one, you are now in the business of selling real estate. This is no longer about your house. It's time to focus on making it someone else's house. If you're going to get emotionally attached to a house, do it with the new home that you're about to buy. Number two, we use professional photography, which means to you, people will put eyeballs on your property. That plus our marketing will equal lots of interest. But so I hate to tell you that even with all that interest, People are gonna do their best to talk themselves out of walking through your home. It drives me nuts, but our job, your job, is to get them from the street to inside the house. Hey, they're gonna drive by and they're gonna do their best to talk each other out of walking through the house. So, curb appeal matters a lot, more than it should. Hey, if you think about it, you live 90% of your time inside your house, 
about 9% in the backyard on the deck or playing with the kids, and about 1% in the front yard. And that's usually when you're shoveling snow or mowing the grass, not doing something that's a whole lot of fun. But hey, you only get one chance to make a first impression. So you're gonna wanna be sure to trim the overhanging tree, put the trash cans out of sight, put the bikes and basketballs away, hey, and bring some color flower baskets in the summertime, maybe some mums in the fall, you got Christmas or Halloween, 4th of July, you got big bright flags. Put some color between the street and your house. Number three, say you do manage to get them to the front porch. There they are, the realtors fumbling with the lockbox, trying to get the key out. And what are the buyers doing? They're looking around, they're seeing the cobwebs and the dirt and the grime and the front door that hasn't been cleaned in God knows how long. So, hey, make sure that they're staring at something clean and sharp. First impressions matter. Hey, you may never use the front door. If you're like most people, you come in through the garage, but you're gonna bring everybody in for a showing through the front door. So, hey, paint the front door. Knock down the spider webs, power wash the front porch. If you don't have the equipment or don't wanna do it, I know a guy. Number four. Once they're inside the front door, the priority begins in the front hallway, and it works back from there. First impressions again. Hey, I've had people take one step inside a house and go, hey, Bob, this one's just not for us. We're out of here. Hey, so the least important things to get done are the basement, the kid's bedroom, the garage. You can have all the boxes in the world in the garage and it doesn't matter. The side of the house, don't worry about power washing that. That's the, like the last thing that you do. What matters is everything as you move back through the house. That's what's most important. So concentrate your efforts beginning there. Number five, there's a saying, and it's God awful true. Kitchens and baths sell houses. Now, the price point may play a role in what you do. A few years back, I was doing a listing presentation with somebody and it was a pretty nice house. I mean, it was kind of unique, but it, it was pressing a mill. And the guy just refused refused to consider putting granite countertops in. He said, well, the people will, they'll wanna choose their own. Sorry, people looking at a million dollar home do not wanna look at Formica countertops. So consider what price point you're at and then do the things that need to be done to sell it to somebody shopping at that price point. You wanna motivate them. It's not about you, it's about them. Make it attractive to them. Make them get their checkbook out. So you may wanna consider, do the appliances match? Are they all working? Do all the burners work? Or is it obvious that there's something wrong with that kitchen range? Hey, it may not have bothered you. You may have lived with it for 10 years, but a buyer coming in, those are like trigger points for them is to say, well, maybe the house hasn't been taken care of, or it just doesn't give you that first impression. You may need to tile a bathroom or update some plumbing or electrical fixtures. Hey, it all depends. And when it comes time to show your house or have people walk through your house, you're gonna wanna remember this because yes, it's a pain in the donkey, but kitchens and baths sell houses. So take the time when people are walking through that those things look sharp. Number six, you're gonna to wanna to walk through your house and you're gonna to wanna to thin it out. You wanna look at your countertops and the, the, the tops of chests of drawers and bookcases and all those things, and you wanna remove half of the items there. You wanna box them up, you wanna move them out, you wanna give it to Goodwill, you wanna haul it away. Then you wanna do half again. That's about what most of us have on our tops of our counters and our chest of drawers is way too much stuff for the person coming in looking to buy. Now, this doesn't cost you a whole lot, but it does take a little bit of time and effort. Now, I don't agree with realtors that say you need to depersonalize your house totally. I think you need to convey to people that the people living here like to live here. Buyers like that feeling. They can tell when they walk through a house and it's a divorce situation and the guy's sleeping on a bed on the floor. That doesn't help create a good feeling. So. Hey, you do what you can to make it feel warm. Even if you take out a lot of the personal stuff, leave enough so that they, they get a feeling that somebody enjoys living there. Hey, people even like seeing those uh, notes on the kitchen table or on a chalkboard that say, 10 things we love about living here. That's something you might wanna think about. Number seven, people ask me, should we get a pre-listing inspection? That way we could repair everything in advance. And I go, no. Hey, here's what inspectors do. They come into your place and they write for three hours. That's how they justify their fee. 
they're there for three hours. If you get a pre-listing inspection done and you repair 30 items, when the buyer's inspector comes in, he's gonna write for three hours. And you're gonna have this another list that's equally as long as the first one. Every house has a list and they're long. They go 50 and 100 items. And you know what? When you move out of your next house, you'll probably have that list too. Besides, you don't know how the buyer's gonna respond. You know, buyers have different comfort levels about different things. One guy may be an electrician. Another one, the wife's brother may be a plumber. They may not give a hoot about those problems, okay? So unless it's something just real glaring that's gonna get in the way of the sale, up front, if somebody writing an offer, hey, let it go. We'll deal with it at the time of the inspection, okay? Number eight. Now, there are some problems that just must be taken care of. If you've got asbestos or mold or stained ceilings or pet odors and stains, those are deal killers. I mean, people don't wanna hear about asbestos, okay? It scares the living daylights out of them. If you know you got a, a situation there, take care of it before you put the house on the market. If you have black mold hanging off of something or other, get it taken care of before the people start walking through your house. Stained ceilings, people go, oh, I don't wanna have to paint that ceiling. Hey, let me tell you, people walk through a house and it's one of the things that lots of people know and the guy will look at that stained ceiling and he'll point it out to the wife and then they'll walk through the house and he'll come back and he'll point out that stain in the ceiling. Now, you may have put a new roof on your house in the last year and it's not a problem or fixed the toilet five years ago but never painted the ceiling. But it's a problem to that buyer and you lose the buyer because you didn't get out a can of kills, paint it, and then paint the ceiling. And if you don't want to paint the whole ceiling, hey, I know a guy. Not to solve these problems will cost you more than the repair work. Number nine, carpets. Hey, if they're dirty, clean them. If they have wrinkles in them, get them stretched. If they're just beyond use, replace them. And I know a guy for any of those jobs or for laminate or hardwoods as well. And your price point may dictate just what you need to do or want to do or have to do, okay? But again, first impressions. Number 10, paint hides a lot of blemishes. And this is especially true if you have a vacant house because when you move all your furniture away from the wall and take the paintings off the wall, there's gonna be these marks. And so the paint needs to be touched up or the room needs to be repainted. It's a cheap fix and it goes a long way to getting your house sold. And not just sold, but sold for the most money. Number 11. Hey, you do whatever it takes to get the house ready to sell and you got all life going on and the kids have got ball games and you know, all of these things and you're tired, but guess what? The house needs to be clean. And I mean really cleaned. It needs to kind of shine. So hey, clean it or have it cleaned and yeah, I know a guy. Okay, number 12, almost done. Remove the screens if you can. It will make the amount of light coming into your house that much greater, which people love, okay? If you have, uh, if you live with your curtains closed, open them. Again, you're in the business of selling this property. It's not about you anymore. It's about the potential buyer getting their checkbook out. So, hey, have the windows washed. Brighten the place up. Clean windows just shine. Okay, and hey, I know a guy. Number 13, let's talk about staging. It's not something that a lot of people consider, but hey, cold vacant houses do not sell very well. And this may be a price point thing, but I view staging everywhere from about, I don't know, 250,000 on up. So, you know, that's not like major, major price point in today's market. Staging, professional staging can really make a difference in getting the most money for a house, selling it in the quickest time and with the least hassle. Every time I sell my own house, I put myself through this exact same exercise. I'm convinced it's why I've sold my last five houses on average in less than six days. And no, I didn't give them away, rest assured. Hey, on the first one over in Glendale, I'd been working on the house and I'd gotten it all fixed up and it was late on a Saturday afternoon and I loaded up all my tools and I had a pickup truck was just loaded with stuff and I'm pulling out of the driveway and the last thing I do is I stop and I get out and I put the for sale sign in the front of the house and, the, and an open house sign. And this truck comes pulling up and the guy jumps out and he says, he's like dialing the phone and he says, hey, hey, can, can my wife and I look at your house? 
And I, I'm like, man, I'm beat. I'm going home. And I, he, he says, no, we really, my wife's going to want this house. I, you know, sure, sure, sure thing. And we keep talking a little bit. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. He couldn't get a hold of his wife. And I said, I'll, I'll tell you what. I've got an open house tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. And I will be here at 8 o'clock. And, and if you want to get a look before everybody else does, be here at 8 o'clock. So the next morning, I'm there at about 10 to 8. And the guy's already there. He's got his wife and he's got his realtor. And so I take them through the house and they say, give me a minute. And so they're out back uh, sitting at the uh, table on the deck and I'm getting ready for the open house. And so about 10, 15 minutes later, the realtor walks in and says, hey, can we have a minute? And so I go out and hey, you know what? 15 minutes later, we had a signed agreement for a full list price plus the realtor's commission. That's what you call a quick sale. So, hey, I pulled the open house sign and I went home. The second house, hey, I sold that one at the end of the first day. The third house was up in the mountains in Colorado, and that one was an outlier. It took all of three weeks to sell. Number four, I sold on the Monday following the first weekend. And the fifth one, I sold on Tuesday after the first weekend. Hey, I hope you found this helpful and that it will help you sell your house in six days or less. Hey, we offer a free room by room analysis. I'll walk through the house with you. We can share ideas back and forth. It's free, there's no cost, there's no obligation. And I guarantee you, I'll help you make money and I'll help you save money by not doing things that you don't need to. Hey, to schedule a time, call or text me. Make it a great day now. It's time to check out the most expensive community in our home tour today. And we're talking about Holiday Farms. These are all luxury custom homes. They're built around an 18 hole peat dye golf course. Plus there's an executive nine hole course. There's a long list of amenities, including golf practice facilities, indoor and outdoor pools, tennis and pickleball, basketball, and even a bowling alley. Add a two-story fitness center, and there's even drop-in childcare services. Top it off with a restaurant and all kinds of special events. Hey, they offer two types of memberships. There's a premier golf membership, and then there's a sport and social membership, which I'm told runs about $148 a month. There seems to be a lot of overlap between the two memberships. I'm guessing the biggest difference is probably in cost and probably some exclusivity. There were a total of 21 homes sold in Holiday Farms this past year. They ranged in price from 1.2 to $3.4 million. Let's walk inside and see what a $2 million Holiday Farms home looks like. We're gonna look at 3774 Shirelle. It has 4,183 square feet over a fully finished 2538 square foot basement. That gives you a grand total of 6,721 square feet of finished living space. This private custom built home is nestled in the trees and affords a view of the 12th fairway. It is grand in design and immaculate in detail. It sports an open concept with a gourmet kitchen and even a full butler pantry. And the views from the dining room make you feel like you're bringing the outdoors in. Now, my favorite feature of this home is the outdoor covered patio. It's got a fireplace and a large screen above it. Plus it has darn near a full outdoor kitchen. With five bedrooms, four and a half baths, this one was built in just 2021 and it sold for $2,050,000. Okay, we've taken a look at three great communities in the charming town of Zionsville, which remember is ranked the number three best place to live in the entire state of Indiana. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. The numbers are in for June, and in the 16 county central Indiana marketplace surrounding the city of Indianapolis, the medium home prices are up 7% from a year ago and sitting at $320,000. Homes are selling in nine days as opposed to seven days a year ago. And they're selling at an average discount of 1% below the list price from a year ago. So hey, note to self, don't think you're gonna bid 10% off the list price and get the property. This ain't 2008. Now, sales are down 12% and that's pushing inventory up 21% to 4,262 homes for sale in central Indiana. But that's only a 1.6 month supply and a balanced market ought to have six months. So as that old song says, we've got a long way to go to get there. In Hamilton County, prices are essentially flat sitting with a median average price of $453,000. They're selling on average in six days 
which is, hey, one day shorter than a year ago. They're also selling at a half a percent below asking price. So on a $453,000 home, what's that, uh, $22, $2,300? With sales slowing, inventory is growing, but there's still only 1.2 months supply. And again, that ought to be six months. On the street, this is what I'm seeing and hearing. Good houses in good locations, in good condition, are selling fast. And I might add, for top dollar. So wannabe sellers, get your home ready. This ain't 2021. And for buyers, come prepared. Get yourself pre-approved in advance. Not pre-qualified, pre-approved. If you don't know the difference and why, ask me. And have the lender make out the pre-approval letter for as much as you qualify for. There's two reasons why. Number one, if you see a house that you just really love and have to have, you'll be ready. Even if it's outside that budget that you had in mind and more than that letter, you'll be ready and you won't lose out. Because hey, you're not gonna have to be trying to find your lender at seven o'clock on a Saturday night. That's not a good strategy for success. Number two, many people don't want that letter to state $1 more than what the asking price on the house is. They don't want the seller to think that they have $1 more that they can afford to spend on that house. But guess what? Think about what you're telling the seller. You're telling them that you're at the top of your ability to purchase. And given the choice, they're gonna look at other offers and they're gonna find one where there's a big gap between what somebody can afford and what they're buying. That will make the very little risk of that loan not closing. So if you really wanna buy a certain house and not just practice writing offers, do these two things to increase your odds of being successful. Now, if I can be of service, hit me up in the comments below or call me directly. And hey, make it a great day now. If you're considering relocating to the greater Indianapolis area or moving anywhere within central Indiana, be sure to tune in every week to learn all there is to know about real estate and living in Indiana. Whether you're buying or selling, please keep in mind, I work harder to make good things happen. Hey, make it a great day now. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to watch this next clip right now.